Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are out here on the launch pad today with our spangly new uh, Artemis 3M. Uh, this is being launched as a test vehicle. Don't worry, we're not shipping off from Mars just yet. Um, I left, left last episode saying that we we're probably going to uh, launch this other uh, life support slug. Well, even spending 90% of the money I had available wouldn't rush it fast enough to get launched in within two or three days of that window. Or not two or three days, within a week or so of that window. Uh, so I decided it just wasn't worth it. We're just going to let it complete without spending the money, and we will launch it uh, right before we launch the actual mission to Mars. And just uh, kind of hope it all goes well. So this is the first of uh, two test flights involving uh, our Mars mission. This is the Artemis 3M. I'm sure I've said that already. But uh, we're going to test out, make sure it can get to orbit, make sure it got, has the Delta V when it gets there to make a transfer to Mars, and make sure it's got all the life support that it needs to make the trip and enough to on board to buy it time for docking. Uh, I could be doing all of this while I'm talking, but or while I'm launching, but we need to let the rocket fuel. So, yeah, I do the fueling on the pad trick. I've been doing that uh, since the beginning of the series, I'm sure we're all well aware. And while we're here, we might just as well wait for daylight. There it is. A nice dawn launch. Always very pretty. So I'm not quite cresting the horizon. But now that our rocket is fueled, we have uh, Yegor in the pilot seat. Uh, accompanying him are uh, Nina and Boris. And, uh, oh wow, it's an entirely Russian crew. Interesting. SAS is on, throttle is set to full, ignition sequence start. And avionics lock. Oh man, that is a huge discrepancy. Well, I probably should have caught that before. I'm glad I'm catching it now, as opposed to when we're trying to ship off from Mars. I guess I forgot to put a control core on the bottom stage. Did I... is this updated at all? No, these are still the J2s. Oh. Very interesting indeed. So this does have to get upgraded a whole bunch. Well, this should be interesting. I wonder how I left the avionics controller off of it, though. And we're down a lot. Let's just uh, take a little peek in here. Oh, yeah, we still got the Saturn 1 unit. It needed to be moved up to the Saturn unit. Well, uh, this is going to be interesting. Now that I... Well, I can close that. Let me find my little pen and start taking notes, because apparently there's going to be lots of things that I have messed up here. Saturn 1 unit. Replace. There's note number one. So, as soon as the avionics unlocks, I'll... St no, actually, you know what? Let's pull up mech job and the smart-ass window, because uh, getting conclusive data here is more important surface. No, never mind. I haven't used this in forever. So, ah, <laughs> now it's a mute point. Now that we're about to crack the speed of sound and out to nearly nine kilometers, we could start our gravity turn. Very, very, very inefficient here. All right, uh, smart ass, you can go away. Well, that's quite pretty. All right, well, I'm going to fly the rest of this to orbit now that I've brought all of you up to speed, and uh, we'll get to more things that need to be fixed, undoubtedly, once we get there. And I will now be uh, taking over for a little bit. It is new me, the one who knows everything that's about to happen. So, as if this launch wasn't... Uh, already plagued enough as far as the test flight is concerned. Some of you may want to direct your attention over to the uh, left hand side of the screen where we have the staging menu. Uh, pay very close attention there because I thought everything here was going smoothly. We come up very nicely on booster sep and as they always have for this launcher they separate very cleanly. And then this happens. Check your staging because when you try to separate the launch tower this might happen. 
Well, I uh, screwed that one up pretty good. Um, I, I tried to fire what I thought was the launch escape system, and it was a decouple. <laughs> uh, so we're uh, we're just kind of riding the uh, the upper stage as it pushes us. We have separated from it, so we have no real control. But uh, you know, here we are. So this whole thing is uh, pretty well screwed up. But uh, we're just going to see where this takes us, because this thing costs a lot of money. And we have a contract to do a crude or orbital for uh, three people. Uh, let's check the parameters of the said contract. Yeah, crude orbital, three kerbals, uh, below 300 uh, kilometers, above 160 kilometers. So if we keep our apoapsis there... Our eccentricity below 0091. Yeah, and then stay there for 10 days. So maybe we're just going to see how well this works for us, full well knowing that we have to burn out the top stage. Uh, we don't have any real control here. No, we'll turn our CS off, otherwise, we're just going to waste a whole lot of fuel. Uh, our time to apoapsis is decreasing, but uh, I would like to be angled more towards horizon. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll just have to see what happens. And now begins the precarious act of balancing on a booster you are not uh, technically attached to. Uh, I think we're not for those fairings. Uh, you will note some random explosions happening there. Um, as things inside the fairing are stressed or impacting other parts of our S4B stage and exploding. So uh, I did switch over to the booster itself and uh, through its uh, Saturn control unit I was able to very precariously wiggle down to a uh, more horizon-like heading and lots of fuel left in this little guy. So it was kind of a balancing act and done very gently, delicately, until finally the engine burned. We were able to light our uh, single J2 upper stage. And upon close inspection, everything that is supposed to be in there is still in there. But uh, if you watch very closely at that little slow motion clip, you will have seen that the uh, waste containers for our crew support module flew off during that staging event, which probably also decoupled the uh, the crew container, the life support system for the flight to Mars, if that doesn't explain some of my upcoming confusion. Well, uh, 266 by 248 with uh, three five, or 4352 meters per second left in our uh, S4B stage, and uh, with a good, cool air quotes, transfer window that should be enough to uh, push this as is to Mars. Uh, that's a good sign, even though I really screwed up the ascent and I screwed up the avionics and I staged the wrong thing, this would, this flight would still be able to go. Were there a window, and it was a good one, where it would only take about four uh, kilometers per second to get there. So that's a pretty good omen, considering we're going to upgrade to the uh, HG3s for the actual launch. And those should very well uh, cover any margin uh, that I may have created and maybe give us a, a little extra wiggle room. So that's good. Uh, I, I am excited. So uh, the very next thing we need to test is, uh, well, let's see, what's our life support right now? 173 days. I wonder if that does include our HAB. Go ahead and stage that off. And... Uh, Unlock our pro where is our oh no, that's what exploded. Our habitat exploded. That's no good. That is no good at all. Well. That's interesting. 
So maybe this margin that we have doesn't actually exist because our load got suddenly lightened halfway up. Oh no. <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Uh, so our life support is certainly not reading everything that we will have at our disposal on a trip to Mars. And based on the quote-unquote good window statistics um, of previous transit times to Mars, uh, if we've got about 150, 170 days, that should give us enough time to encounter and uh, hopefully make a uh, rendezvous with uh, the station itself. So we're just going to pull away from our S4B stage, which we might just as well deorbit if it still has the... Nope, no battery charge. So no response from the controls. Yeah. Yep, should have done that before staging, but I guess I couldn't because I couldn't see into the fairing. I could have ditched just one and then done something about it, but oh well. And we'll turn RCS off to preserve our Delta V for no good reason whatsoever. And, uh, let's... Yeah, crude orbital. Reach specified orbit for 10 days. So that's exactly what they're going to do before we go ahead and bring them back home, but I will probably touch on that next episode, because I've got a bunch of things that I need to uh, go take a look at in the VAB and uh, get inspected. Because, man, were this going to Mars, everything would have gone wrong. Imagine if we had made that transfer burn and then realized that the habitat and the life support wasn't there. And we'd have uh, 173 days, roughly. I mean, we could probably push it to that 187. Uh, they'd just be really hungry and thirsty when they got there. Oh, man. I am so sorry, Boris, Nina, and Yegor. <laughs> it's a good thing you guys only have to be up here for 10 days and you're not going to Mars today because oh, I'd feel absolutely horrible if I just killed you guys because I blew up your hab although that would be uh, that would be worthy of a mission abort I'd say man but they'd already be on their way to Mars by the time I realized it we're just going to assume that this is never going to happen again <laughs> and that uh, I will have these problems, especially the one with staging that probably caused the explosion in the first place, uh, figured out before the actual launch. So we're going to leave these guys to playing Yahtzee for 10 straight days, uh, setting another Guinness World Record or something. And uh, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I do appreciate it. And I will see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.